Okay, so assuming everything is uh, good to go, let's actually go ahead and create our ambient occlusion shader. And that's the bonus part of this tutorial. I'm going to hit M on the keyboard, M for material, to open up the material editor. Okay, so the material editor is just a window where you can create materials and shaders for your scene. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the first material here on the top left slot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to a mens rate material. How do I do that? There's a button here that says standard. Okay, click on that button and the material map browser window opens up. And what you want to do is select the arch and design material that's up here on the top of the list. That's the architectural material from Mental Ray. It's very, very good. I strongly recommend using it whenever you get a chance. Okay. We also have a drop down list up here of different templates we can use. So you can choose things like rubber, leather, masonry, uh, glossy finishes, pearl finish. We want to choose a matte finish, which is just an ideal diffuse uh, shading model. Okay. Now, with that done, I have the material here, but it's not applied to anything in my scene just yet. So what I need to do is select everything in my scene that I want to have the material and simply hit this button here with a little green cube. That's the assigned material to selection button. And once I do that, everything turns gray because that's the color of this material. All right. If I come into my scene here, let me just deselect everything. And I render this out now. Everything's going to render out gray except of course for the clock which is in the container because the container is closed it's sealed off it won't allow me to apply shader to the objects that are inside so we're gonna fix that right now okay that's why I said I was suspicious of the container because I knew that the container wasn't gonna let me do that so what I'm gonna do is close the material editor I'm gonna select the container and hit the make all content unique button here in the modify tab and that's gonna pop the container open now what I can do is simply select everything inside the container which is all the clock pieces. Hit M to open up the material editor again. With that material selected, I'll hit the little green cube button to assign the material, and voila, there you go. Now if I render this out, you'll notice that the clock is completely gray. This, this doesn't look very pretty. It looks pretty nasty, actually. So we're not even done with this yet, okay? What we can do with this material here is we can use ambient occlusion. I'm going to use it in a way that's different than how most people use this shader. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down here to Special Effects, Special Effects Rollout, and we have an ambient occlusion parameter. Simple enough, right? Turn that on, and what? We're going to get ambient occlusion to work? Well, if we render this out, it's not working. Okay, so let me show you how to, how to do a little trick here to get this to work uh, in a specific way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the ambient occlusion to not use a custom ambient light. I'm going to tell it to use the global ambient light color which right now just happens to be black. So if I render this out, you'll notice that very little difference, if any. What I need to do is go up to the rendering menu. I'll go to the environment button here. Eight on the keyboard is the shortcut. And you notice we have an ambient color here. Right now it's set to black by default. I'm gonna turn that up all the way to white. And if I render this out again, everything now renders out white, but it still doesn't look very good. It still looks pretty nasty only now it's white instead of gray. So let me close that. So how can we fix this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the main material parameters. I'm going to go to the diffuse parameters here. I'm going to go to the color. And next to the color is a little square button right here that's empty. If we click on that button, it opens up the material map browser. What we want to do is select the first one here in the list called the ambient reflective occlusion. We're going to click on that shader and we're going to bring that in. And now if we render this out again, it's going to render out completely black, which is obviously no good. So the reason it's rendering out black is because of our max distance. Right now it's set to zero. When you're doing an interior scene, if you're using ambient occlusion, you can't use a distance that's set to zero because everything's just going to come out really, really dark and in many cases pure black. So what I need to do is uh, give it a number, a max distance. So I'm going to give it about 20 feet. And when I do that, if I render again, now we can actually start to see the ambient occlusion effect taking effect in our scene, okay? But right now it's completely blown out. Everything is super white. You can see stuff better, but it's too blown out. Why is that happening? The reason that's happening is because by default, 3ds Max creates a couple of default lights in your scene. Every time you start a scene with 3ds Max, if there are no lights in your scene, 3ds Max says, well, let me play some automatic lighting for you, buddy. You don't want it to do that, though, because 
in this case, it's actually hurting our scene. So how do we tell 3ds Max to, you know, no thanks, keep the lighting to yourself, I'll take care of lighting uh, on my own. The way we tell it to do that is by creating a light in our scene. See, when we create a light in our scene, that tells 3ds Max, there's a light in the scene, please shut off the default lighting. So I'll go to the Create tab over here. And I'm going to go to the little Light button right there. I'm going to switch to Standard here in the drop-down list. I'm just going to create an Omni Light and just place it anywhere in our scene like so. Now I'm going to go to its Modify tab here. I'm going to go down to the Intensity and Color Attenuation parameters and take the Multiplier and place that at zero. Essentially, what that does, it turns the light off. Now if I go back in my scene and I render this out again, I should get a totally different result and you can see that I do. The main difference here is the only thing that's creating lighting in the scene right now is the ambient occlusion material. There's no lights, there's no default lighting, there's none of that stuff. Nothing is influencing the lighting or scene except for the ambient occlusion which is what I wanted. So this gives us that nice clay render type effect, this nice ambient occlusion type render. And the beauty of it is we zoom in here to stuff what it does is that objects that are close to each other, or surfaces I should say, that are close to each other, renders out darker. Areas that are more exposed um, to open area with nothing occluding it, nothing blocking its view, um, and ends up rendering out lighter. So it ends up creating a very nice type render that makes it easy to see details in the models. So this is very good for when you have to evaluate a model and you don't want a texture, you don't want lighting or shadows or anything like that to really influence the way that you see the model. So this is very good just for seeing the core essentials of a model and determining, you know, does the model look good or not? And if it looks good with the ambient occlusion shader like this, then it's going to look great once you add textures to it, once you create some nice lighting with mental rays, so on and so forth. Okay? So there you go. That's an ambient occlusion render. Now there's still a few more things we want to do with this because we're not quite done. So you can see how the ambient occlusion shader is just great. Now if I come over here and I zoom in to say this corner over here and I render this out, you're going to notice, or maybe you might not notice, it's a little bit hard to notice, but if you pay attention and I point it out, you will notice it. You notice that all the edges of all my objects here are very hard, very sharp. That's not good because it doesn't look very realistic, doesn't look very nice, okay? No edges in your 3D models so it looks razor sharp unless if you're purposely making some type of a blade or sharp instrument or knife, sword, something like that. If you're doing the corners of a piece of furniture, it shouldn't be razor sharp because that doesn't make any sense. That just doesn't exist in the real world. So how do we fix that? If we go back to the material, hit M on the keyboard to open up the material editor over here okay now right now we're looking at the ambient occlusion material here what we need to do is go back to the mens ray material to do that easily right next to this yellow button go to this uh, parent button it's the go to parent button it has a little arrow that points up click on that that takes you back up to the mens ray shader okay what I want to do here is go back down to the special effects rollout where I turn on ambient occlusion I want to turn on the round corners feature when I do that watch what happens let me do another render if you look at the corners, the corners are softer now. 